Hey, yo, it's your frame perfect. Everything's a PB if you practice enough. Gotta go fast, speedrun fan savvy. Have you ever played a game and thought, oh, I know this game like the back of my hand. I for sure could beat it in one day. Are, Are you sure, sure about, about that? that? Could you play that same game over and over to the point where you could beat it without getting hit? Full 100% completion in a single sitting or even with your eyes closed? Next, Next you'll say savvy. You'll say what the fuck? You're asking for a lot. That's way too hard. Well, guess what? Speedrunners do exactly that. With awesome games done quick, 2024 about to begin, I have speedrunning on the mind. I want to take a look at what makes speedrunning games so fun to watch. The terms used and share some of my favorites from GDQ events. My, my main goal is hopefully to get you to check out some speedruns and even GDQ marathons since these speedrun marathons are some of the most beginner-friendly introductions into speedrunning. Now, Savvy, isn't speedrunning just a normal playthrough? How would someone even go fast? Wouldn't that be boring? Speedrunning is one of the most engaging things to watch. It is more than just playing games fast. There is so much time and dedication spent to understand the mechanics of these games that you would think the speedrun has made these games. To start, the average time it takes to beat a game can vary. JRPGs like Final Fantasy and Zen and Blade can take anywhere between 40 hours to 200 hours. Action adventure games such as Uncharted, Tomb Raider, God of War can be somewhere between 15 to 30. Shooters that do have stories can take 5 to 15 hours, Halos, CODs, Gears, etc. These estimates are based on player submitted entries that only focus on beating the game, just the main story and nothing more. These can be found on howlongtobeat.com. As an example, I just beat Spider-Man 2 on PS5. I finished the story and completed a few things but did not 100% the game, so I'm like 60 to 70% completed. This took me 23 hours. And a According to howlongtobeat.com, the average completion rate is 28 hours and 4 minutes, so I'm basically on track to complete within that average. And then according to speedrun.com, the top run for the 100% new game plus is 7 hours, 36 minutes, and 29 seconds. That's 20 hours less than the average playthrough, that's insane. This is where the time and dedication comes into play for that 7 hour run. Now that you have an idea what speedrunners are capable of, let's talk about common terms used in speedrunning. In the Olympics, in the spring event there's a 100 meter 200 meter 400 meter it's the same category but a different distances essentially that's the same thing in speed running the event will be insert whatever game then the distance will be but not limited to these categories any percent, hundred percent, low percent, and glitchless. Any percent. This is when you just need to get to the end credits, whether it means using glitches, exploits, just playing the game normally, but faster than casually possible. Hundred percent. The hundred percent category is completing the game, so doing everything the game has to offer. Completion. Low percent is the opposite of hundred percent. Low percent category is when the runner's goal is to do the bare minimum of things in the game, like no power ups, upgrade, using only specific weapons, defeating the least amount of bosses. Glitchless, just as it sounds, is a category that avoids glitches in a game that is typically glitch heavy. So you'll see any percent glitchless still beating the game as fast as possible without using glitches. Runs are not limited to just these type of categories. These are just common categories you will see. It really depends on the game the runner is playing. Each game will have unique categories. As an example, Super Mario 64 has 120 star, 70 star, 16 star, 1 star, and even 0 star. 120 star can be considered 100% run, and 0 star can be considered low percent run. Okay, I hear ya, I hear ya. This was for sure a lot of information to take in. Speedrunning comes off not very beginner friendly at first. My goal with this video is not to get you to speedrun games, but to watch them. Before we move on, here are some quick terms. PB or PR, personal best, personal record, OOB, out of bounds, Soft lock, game is still running but refuses inputs. RNG, random number generator, use if any kind of luck is involved, spawn rate, boss patterns. Frame perfect, a trick that requires an input to happen in exactly one particular frame. Pixel perfect, a trick that requires an input to happen when an object in the game is on one specific pixel. Okay, that's it for terms, but these are ones to keep in mind moving forward. Go ahead, start naming games. There's more than likely speedrun of it. COD, speedrun. Pup Hut Saves the Zoo, speedrun. Super Mario 64, one of the biggest ones. Club Pigman before its demise, yes sir, speed run. Get banned as fast as possible, rest in peace the goat. Pencil sharpening, speed run. There's a wide variety of speedruns and categories that will blow your fucking mind and how creative, time consuming, patient, talented these speedrunners and runners are. Okay, with that, twice a year, GDQ, or Games Done Quick, holds an event to raise money for Doctors Without Borders and Preventive Cancer Foundation, with each event raising millions of dollars. These events are streamed on Twitch and non-stop for an entire week and solely focuses on beating games as fast as possible 
aka speedrunning. The reason I bring this up is because I believe there are a good reason to get into speedrunning. The runner, aka the person playing the game, typically has been running the game for a while, so will be watching someone with tons of experience and able to showcase the abilities of these games. Another reason is the commentary. The runner, or something dubbed the couch, aka commentators, can explain the story, the lore, or even why the runner is doing certain things during the run. A lot is explained very well. I am no expert, but I'll do the best of my ability to explain what makes each run interesting and fun to watch. So let's share some of my favorite runs from GDQ events. I will link each run in the bio. When Breath of the Wild was first released, we all knew it was possible to beat the game fairly quick, since after getting the four runes in the opening area of the game, you were given the quest to defeat Ganon right away. So during Summer Games Done Quick 2019, that's exactly what this runner did in the any percent no amiibo run. So all the runner has to do is get the four runes and beat Ganon. The runner utilizes the game's physics to get through key shrines to get the four runes faster, uses the game bolt time to use the momentum to gain ungodly amounts of speed to travel across the map, defeating all of Ganon's face with no armor or upgrades. It's amazing what's shown off during this run. The run finishes in 33 minutes and 51 seconds. I highly recommend checking out the run. It's very quick as a speedrun should be, and sick seeing how one of my favorite game is being so effortlessly. Okay, this one's kind of a cop out here since it's not a speedrun but a technical showcase, but I wanted to share it anyways because I really like it. As a Dance Dance Revolution avid enjoyer, if I see a machine, you bet your sweet cheeks I'm gonna DDR. You ever see those guys just going hard on the machine? Well, that's what this is. It's cool stuff, but during Awesome Games Done Quick 2023, the runner Demo does a technical showcase of Step Mania. Step Mania is an open source clone of DDR. Literally same idea, but way more accessible. The reason I want to share this is because I love DDR, and I'm not or will be anywhere near as good as this. Look, just watch how fast the notes go, the way he has to position his feet, the mountain notes he has to think of head, the runner goes on for 1 hour, 21 minutes, and 28 seconds, with only breaks between songs. It always amazes me when I see a run like this. Okay, I want to do a lightning round of speed runs to look out for since there's so many to share and talk about. Super Mario Odyssey from Awesome Games on Quick 2019. He literally showcases every world including the moon. It's over three hours but there's very little downtime. It's all go 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 from the moment it starts. The commentary is very funny and informal why things are done. During Summer Games Done Quake 2023, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess's run, look, I don't fully understand what happens in this run, or at least at the start of it, but some sort of save state manipulation is used to get a little farther in the game by using a playable version of the title screen. To be honest, I don't fully get it, but the run's really cool and I highly recommend it if you enjoy Twilight Princess. Awesome Games Done Quake 2019, Cuphead is a hard game, like a brutally hard game. It's a bullet hell game with bosses with ungodly amount of health. This runner beats the game with S ranks, you get S rank for having a perfect run on expert, P ranks for beating a platforming level without shooting, it's really crazy and definitely should check it out cause Cuphead is not fucking easy. Now I want to end with a final speed run from Awesome Games Done Quick 2019 of one of my favorite Souls games. Bloodborne. Now Souls and Souls-like games put some hair on your chest. This isn't your Mario or Zelda's. If you ever played one, you know how annoyingly hard they are and they really do take a lot of time and practice. There are people out there who can beat these type of games using a banana as a controller or shit, even playing two games at the same time. Hey Zeus here shows makes this game look easy. If you say this game is easy, you're a goddamn liar. This run isn't a world record or anything but an excellent showcase of the runner's abilities. Zeus does a great job in commenting why he does certain things, how the riding has changed over the years, why he does and doesn't use certain items. He is honest and will say, I don't know why this works, it just does. I remember watching this run and learning things about the game I had no idea about. Bloodborne is one of my favorite games and seeing it beat so effortlessly makes me like the game even more. These have been some of my favorite speedruns. I hope this video at least convinced you to check out some speedrunning videos or some GDQ marathons. Obviously there's plenty I did not include, but the ones I showcase hopefully push you in the right direction. As these runs showcase the abilities of the runner, the game, and the commentary that I will explain things I could never fully understand. Are you looking forward to Awesome and Summer Games Done Quick 2024? I can't wait to see Bomb Rush, Cyberfunk, and Baldur's Gate 3. This is Savvy, and this has been The Vibes. See ya!